Good morning everyone, welcome back to the nature patch. Today we've got quite a few plants that I really want to get planted into the garden. We've got all of them down here along with another few and I'll share with you what we planted yesterday as well. All of these ones here are from Whitbird Environmental who I do work with and these were gifted but they are all great uh, Australian natives and these are all native to the area where we live in the south coast of New South Wales. So I wanted to get a lot of these planted in the ground. A lot of these are actually going to suit the conditions that we've got here as well because they are native plants and I've chosen a few that don't mind really moist soils and wet conditions. So as we do plant these, I'll share what they are, but I'll put a little overlay on the screen of what we've got here at the moment, just kind of a little overview. Some great looking plants, but they really do need to get into the ground as soon as possible. So I'm really excited to get them all in today and yeah, hopefully just do a little bit of a garden with me for you to see what I get up to in the garden today. All right, so I'm going to take these down into the back garden and kind of just get a little bit of a rough idea in my head where I want to plant these before we put them in the ground. All right, so behind us here, this is the area where we're going to be planting all of those native plants. I've got Scott helping me out today. Um, so we are going to fill in a lot of this area because I don't know if you could tell when I was walking down there, it is so wet and boggy in this area. Again, I'll put, I'll put an overlay of what this area looks like. There's so much mud. And a lot of these plants that I'm going to be planting, they really don't mind these kinds of conditions. And I also need a lot of plants in this area to help break up the soil. It's very clay soil um, and adding more plants into an area, specifically these types of plants, is going to help break up the soil um, and allow this water to drain just a little bit better than it is right now, which is definitely something that I need for this area. It's also super busy around me today. We've got dogs, birds, neighbors, cars. So we're just going to get into planting and I'll put some music over when we do some planting. Um, but first we need to go get some tools and then we can get planting all of these plants. So it is pretty hard to tell, they're only really small tube stocks, but I've kind of laid them out a little bit along here so that they're fairly spread out and also kind of have some uniform look to it. The way I like to space things is that I do the larger things first. So I was looking at where the couriers might go, this one here. So I've got one here in front of one of the banksias and then another one just up there in front of the leptospermums. And then interspaced throughout, I've put the, there's uh, some matte rushes, this one here. And these are going to clump up really nicely and fill in this area. So that's those kind of up there. And then I also have some of the Dianellas down here and they're just gonna be in a nice little line to kind of define the garden bed to come around the corner and I'll fill in some more uh, shrubs behind them there. So it's not uh, the easiest of jobs, but the how I'm gonna be planting these is just using kind of a, well, this is a hoe, but I would probably, I should be using a mattock to just get the grass um, aside and then dig a small hole for these tube stalks. They don't need a big one. And then I have a pot of worm castings here, which I'm just gonna add probably that much or so into each of the holes uh, and that should give them a really great feed that is all organic um, and yeah they should be really happy with that. There's kind of like this misconception around native species that they don't need any fertilizer which is completely not true if you think about it in nature there's always compost and you know like animal droppings falling onto the ground there's a continuous nutrient cycle 
So you still do want to be giving fertilizer to a lot of your plants. It's always just the type you want to be looking out for. Uh, and organic is the best if you can get something like worm castings um, that is just really gentle on the plants. That's just going to be great for all uh, different types of native species. Thankfully it's only just the really top layer that is super muddy. The rest is actually not that bad down there. And after a few days, this is definitely going to dry out, which is what we need. I see there's already just so many worms in the soil here. And then just to cover in that hole, I will eventually be putting some cardboard around all of the rest of the grass, but just for now, I'm just gonna fill in the hole with some leaves that we raked from the pear tree down the back. Just that one there. Just to um, really just define where the plant is um, so that we don't mow over it um, and we can come and check up on it and just know exactly where it is. So all these little orange yellow looking circle things, they kind of look like fertilizer, but they're actually little worm egg sacs. So this is going to be really great to inoculate all of this soil to get lots more worms in here doing their thing. All right, so the next one I'm planting is a courier. This is a white courier and Coriers are some of my favorites for their foliage and also their flowers are just so, so funky and pretty. Um, there's some great varieties of Coria that are all native to Australia. Um, so this one grows to 1.5 meters high and it's got gray green foliage with white flowers from late summer to early spring, which is gonna be really, really pretty. All of these um, plants here flower spring, summer, and some in winter. So I'm going to get a really good show uh, throughout the year, which is really nice. This is great for coastal areas. If you live along the coast, it's kind of like a hedge. You can plant them en masse. You see them a lot of the times on the sides of the road or pathways. Um, they're a really, really great plant. So I'm really happy to have a few planted in the garden. So these ones here that I'm planting are Dianella or these are blue flax lilies. They're really, really pretty species, often seen kind of along uh, riverbeds uh, and they're really great to stabilize the bank of a riverbed. So if you do have a sloped area, Dianella species, same with uh, Lamandras are really great. These also have little um, really pretty purple berries that are edible. Um, 
and it's just a really, really pretty plant. So hopefully these do well here and I've got three of these to plant in this area that I'm just gonna keep more in the shady areas um, because I think they're gonna like these conditions here. These are kind of a clumping plant, same with the grasses. So they can clump up to about like over a meter in a clump um, or about, I don't know, up to a meter high or so but they are pretty controllable. You can contain them uh, and propagate them if they get too big. It's a bit later in the day now, but we managed to finish all of the planting this morning. So I'm really happy that I got everything done. So behind me here, I'm hoping over the next year or so, all of this garden fills in and we'll have a beautiful native Australian garden. But I'm also going to add in a few flowers here that aren't, I don't think they're native, but I just want a little bit of, um, a little bit more pops of color throughout the patch. So I will be adding a few more ground covers throughout here, but also, I'll probably add in a few annuals um, just to really fill in this garden. I will turn you around and show you what I planted um, and then I, we also planted some more trees way down the back so I'll show you those as well. So all up I think we planted about 16 plants over the last two days so I'll show you what they are starting out with these ones here. This is the obviously the most muddy area. <laughs> these ones here we planted some um, kind of like grass species or mat rush species and behind that is a leptospermum this one i'm really excited about this one is called aphrodite and it is a really hardy shrub that grows to that grows to 2.5 meters high and about two wide as well the main thing that i saw in this was that it likes wet conditions so this is actually really really happy here um, so it's going to grow really nicely and cover the fence behind it i've already shared um, kind of along the fence here these plants these are just banksias leptospermums and some more banksias this was the uh, grass that we planted so this is called a knobby club rush and this grows to about one by one meter really likes moist conditions so this is going to be really great for this area um, and just kind of soak up a bit of this water that is coming down and also just um, be really good for the soil because as they grow um, they're really great for erosion control they help retain the soil a lot more if you um, have these in than if you don't have any plants in so i've planted five of these down uh, this row so there's another one here and another one here this was one of those couriers that we planted another one of the grasses um, next to I've planted some thryptamine down here and then we have one two uh, three dianellas they'll be really great here in the more shady areas and another coria next to this gorgeous thryptamine oh my goodness it is just loving life right now just like look at those beautiful flowers so so beautiful and I've seen a lot of native pollinators around this yeah it's just so pretty so I'll walk down to the back here um, so down here you can kind of see there's a bit of a space along the fence we do need to bring in the fence just a little bit or kind of create um, or just make it a little bit more straight because with all this rain is actually slanted that way but to fill in this area here to create just a little bit more of a privacy screen we have planted some uh, melaleucas i think these were the honey bracelet melaleuca these don't mind fairly wet conditions as well um, so i'm sure they'll be happy here and i also planted so I've got another one of those down there and an acacia here. So this is a wattle. So this is acacia 
maidenii, I think that's how you pronounce it, the maiden's bottle. So this one is a small tree growing at 10 to 12, uh, 10 to 15 meters. So this is going to have really gorgeous flowers in summer and I think we'll fill in this little area. I don't think this one was enjoying its time um, with all of the rain, but yeah, I think it's really gonna bounce back really well planted in here. So that's the other um, Malaluca, and then we have one more, a um, wattle down here. So that's everything planted other than two woolly bushes that we both planted, mum helped yesterday over near the fence. I'll put an overlay of what that looks like, but if I get too close and the dogs next door start barking. So we won't uh, go too close there. What do you think about all of the plants that we planted? you like them? Yeah, they're gonna look really good. Yeah, I think they're gonna look really great when they all fill in and yeah, we can just keep adding to it, I think, as we go see what like where we need to fill in um, with with smaller plants and ground covers and things like that so I think we did a good job so we're gonna go inside it's getting a little bit chilly but I hope you enjoyed this video seeing what we got up to today I love filling the garden with Australian native plants because they're so easy to maintain and plant and deal with um, and yeah I, I love adding ones that are also local to this area because again you're just kind of providing a little bit more habitat and food for birds and pollinators so I'm really excited to get this garden going. Alright so we're gonna go and head back in because it's getting a bit chilly um, and go make some dinner soon so just wanted to say thank you again for watching this video and I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. Until my next one, happy gardening everyone. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> Bye!